Hello everyone. I am finally getting around to recording the update 5.2 patch notes. The reason I'm a little bit late on this is uh, because I was still waiting for some replies from Wargaming to explain some of the, the details that we're going to get ourselves into. Uh, this might be a bit of a longer one, so sit back, relax, grab yourself a cup of tea or something, or coffee, whatever beverage of your choice, and let's get to it. The very first thing. Um, the airstrike mechanic. Well, you've seen this already on the Deseven Provincian, the Dutch premium cruiser, which I would say is a little bit overpowered. <laughs> and the main problem that uh, if you're at the receiving end of these airstrikes is that A, uh, these things, well, can have basically unlimited uh, bomber planes that they can call in. And they can call them in constantly, and uh, they can just keep striking you with them. The other problem that you have, and I, I've tried this, I, I have been in the Brandenburg. It was one of the videos I was recording for the Brandenburg review, and I've been next to a Cleveland. And uh, both the Brandenburg and the Cleveland are having a pretty decent AA. And I have been attacked by two, the Seven Provincian. And I don't think I've managed to shoot a single plane down because uh, by the time the planes come in whatever range the AA has, they just drop and then that's it. <laughs> then they're flying out again. So they're swooping down on you like a, uh, like a seagull stealing your french fries and, <laughs> and dropping all that, all that nonsense on your ship. So what has, what has changed now? Um, the, uh, the airstrikes now have four clear steps. So they have an appearance uh, step, so the first 2.5 seconds in which they don't take any AA damage. Then uh, they have a 5 second flight window in which they do take AA damage. Then uh, they uh, they drop their bombs, which takes another 2.5 seconds. So now we're at 7.5 seconds. Uh, and then uh, they will go up into the sky and disappear. So we have a 7.5 second window in which the AA can do some damage and a five second window in which the AA can do damage before we're getting hit. And I've, I haven't tried this yet, but it feels like this might be a little bit of an improvement to, uh, to you know, be, being at the receiving end of these, especially if we're going to get a tech, tree cru a tech tree Dutch cruiser line at some point. So that statement here that overall it takes 10 seconds between calling the airstrikes and bombs hitting the target area. Yes, that is the important part from your side, if you're the one in control of that. Uh, the important part on the other side, if you're at the receiving end, is that you have a five second window of hitting them with AA before they can hit you. And, you know, somewhat diminishing the amount of crap that's falling from the sky onto your ship. Uh... Airstrikes will be on cooldown in respawn. That also sounds like a relatively decent idea. Although if the ships are anything like the Deseven Provincian, then, um, you know, they're going to have them pretty much constantly ready anyway. Uh, there will be more equipment towards this. And there will actually be um, a legendary commander who's got a skill to um, increase the flight speed. Why does this matter? Because if the, if it increases the flight speed, you have less time to hit them with AA before they drop the stuff on you. So there's your pay money and counter this <laughs> sort of option for that thing. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what the Tech Tree Dutch cruisers are looking like. Uh, they might be nothing like the DZP that we've seen so far. Um, there are some minor quality of life improvements here around container opening and... Uh, uh, comparison system system we can now actually filter for things in the in the uh, in the ports that are not premiums but that are tech tree things so if for some reason you do want to see the ships that you uh, like you know you want to say you want to grind something and uh, you want to just filter out all the premiums then that's one way to do it uh, there is going to be some more announcements on the battle modes and stuff there's some back, fi back fixes so let's have a look at that quickly uh, one of the first one is some display bug. Uh, the second one sounds like the problem that the Deseven Provincian had, uh, which would always get a clear sky, um, such that I'm, I'm guessing here that it, such that it, it was counting your airstrike squadrons as as planes shot down, maybe, and. Um, 
Uh, another issue that another bug actually that caused the F Strike Squadrons not to take any AA damage at all at certain heights. Yes, uh, definitely something I can say. I haven't tried it post uh, 5.2, but this all sounds like it goes in the right direction. Uh, we now have the Spanish nation in the ship filter. That's going to get exciting. The Spanish actually had a f uh, had ordered a fair few of uh, the Ansaldo. Uh, designs from the Italians. So there might be some interesting ships coming out there. Uh, we, <laughs> a maxi maximum limit of ship slots is, is higher now. And uh, the stupidly named ships from some collaboration thing have their honor missions and I could really not care less because now we're going to the ship balancing and oh boy, <laughs> things have changed. Let's start out with the Ernst Gede. The tier six German destroyer. Now you have noticed that there was a gonna, there was the new scout cruiser line coming in. They're technically called destroyers, but I maintain that they're more or less scout cruisers, and um, these seem to be taking over the 150 millimeter armament. So the Ansgeda has been reduced to 128. I don't, I'm not sure if the Ansgeda existed. It was either the Ansgeda or the Leberecht Mars. One of them didn't exist. I. I can't remember, I have to look it up, but uh, uh, she gets the 128mm. This is not necessarily a bad thing, um, because while the 150s are good, the 128s are almost as good and are firing faster. So this may actually be a net gain uh, to get the slightly smaller caliber against other destroyers, against things like battleships. I'm not sure uh, if the 128mm AP will be capable of... Um, of, of penetrating bow and stern sections, but it probably will. I will have to test that. So uh, I remember last time they did that, it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. So the uh, jury is still out on that one. And we get to the Friedrich der Große. Now, the Freddy has been modified heavily since she initially came out. This was, used to be a bit of a shock after the Bismarck because the Freddy was taking forever to get up to speed. The maneuverability was bad and um, it felt like a it felt like a difficult step. Now she's got she had her uh, maneuverability boosted, especially the acceleration I think. Uh, you hear the kookaburras outside. Yep. <laughs> Welcome to Australia. I must wait for those to finish. All right, that might go on for a while. Anyway, so uh, the the, maneuver, the the engine has been boosted quite a bit, and uh, things like the secondary overload skill have been added. And all in all, I think it wasn't all that bad. But uh, she's still sort of often considered as difficult to play because of, and this might be a meta thing, because especially since uh, since the you know, more long-range lines, more long-ranged focus lines have been introduced. The brawling is is becoming a bit more of a niche thing, I feel, at times, especially in higher tiers. So uh, she now gets the 420 millimeters that we previously had on the Grosser Kurfürst as her main gun, which obviously means that uh, she gets more damage out of these. And here comes a really, really interesting item. The initial penetration power has been adjusted from 446 to 462. What is that? Well, the uh, armor-piercing shells lose penetration power over time. That much we know because there are captain skills to counter that, namely the APCS skill. And I think it also says in the wiki. So the further away you are, the longer the shell is in the air, the lower its penetration power gets. And... Uh, so there had to be an, an initial penetration power, right? But this is the first time I, in my, at least that I can remember. And yes, that's an airplane flying right overhead. I don't know what is up today. Everybody's trying to disturb me with my recording. Um, so there had to be an initial power. I don't know what this power signifies. My first guess, and there is no confirmation for this, so this is just my guess, what that this might be armor penetration in millimeters, depending on. Um, uh, because it, it kind of sounds like, right? So if you, if you say uh, 462, that, so at, at leaving the gun, the shell would be able to penetrate that. But over time, it loses, let's say, I don't know, 30%. And at that point, it's below, let's say, the belt armor of something relatively heavily armored. And then it can't necessarily punch through that anymore. It may be, it may not be. But it is a value, and we know it now. And it's, it's always interesting to see these hidden statistics. 
Now, she, she has her main battery reload increased from 19 to 19.5, uh, sort of to compensate for that, for that thing. The Grosse Kurfürst, on the other hand, and this is where it gets funky, uh, has had her main battery replaced by 457 millimeter guns. Well, the first thing that irks me about this is that the Germans never considered the 457 millimeter guns. For the H class, it was either the 420s, and I think they considered a 480 millimeter or a 506 millimeter, but never a 457 millimeter gun. So this is com apparently now completely hypothetical. But uh, she gets um, she gets that gun uh, and or she gets these main guns and she gets the HE damage and AP damage obviously adjusted slightly higher fire chance and also the initial penetration power adjusted to 502. So that's something that we now know. We also know that the 420s that the Gosa Kurfürst previously had are now having a lower initial penetration power on the um, on the Friedrich der Große because that's on 462, whereas these things started at 483. So, you know, all good good things to know, all interesting stuff. Uh, the main battery reload has increased as well, and the auto-secondary battery dispersion factor has been adjusted from 1 to 0. Now, this is the one that I was actually waiting for. This is the one I got the confirmation from Wargaming about, uh, that uh, this works exactly like on PC. This is the sigma value. So, higher sigma means... Uh, means tighter dispersion. So when we're talking about dispersion, right, we are talking about sort of an ellipsis made out of the horizontal and vertical dispersion on where your shells are going to land. And the higher this dispersion factor is, the higher the chance that your shells are going to land or the closer towards the target, the center of that ellipsis, your shells are going to land. So higher number is better, makes things more precise. Now, it's not the only factor. Right? Don't forget that. It's the overall dispersion as well. So if you have a massive uh, a massive sur ellipsis where shells can land, even with a relatively high factor, uh, it's, it's not going to make it that much better. Whereas if you already have an extremely tight um, dispersion and you just reduce the dispersion factor, that means that this, the shells scatter more within the ellipsis. But if it's already extremely tight, then this also, again, doesn't matter. So you can't see that as a singular factor. What does this mean in practice? Well, these are the auto secondaries on the Curry. So uh, the 128 millimeter, very, very nice auto secondaries. So these things are now a little bit less railgun like. And I've actually tried that and it looked, yeah, I, I could see that. So I'm, I'm sailing my personal one with uh, Franz von Hipper with the legendary secondary skill and with the, uh, with the dispersion module, I think, and with the historical camo. So uh, they used to be absolute railguns. Um, they are now a little bit more scattery but I don't think it's a massive problem. The 457 millimeter, on the other hand, um, we'll, we'll, we'll look at the ship in a, in a little bit because there's another problem that we've got here. But all in all, um, there have been made some changes to the German high tier battleships. Now let's keep going through this and then we'll switch over to the actual game and I'll show you a couple of other things that are missing from here. Uh, the Yugomo is a bit more, it's, a, it's turning a bit better now, okay? Uh, the Kitakaze. Now this is funny because I was uh, I'm grinding on the Akizuki on my personal account, and um, uh, obviously Kitakaze being the next ship. And I was looking at it, and I was like, "Hang on, that that that's literally an a, a tier nine Akizuki. <laughs> What's the difference?" So um, the Kitakaze now gets the Harugumos torpedo launcher, the six uh, six tuple one. Uh, one of them with a hundred second reload, which is forever, but you do get the uh, reload, insta reload booster things that you, yeah, you get. And she gets her dispersion adjusted. So remember, better dispersion means tighter grouping around the center of the uh, the ellipsis. Now I haven't tried this ship yet, but um, this seems like it's better at extreme range in um, hammering things with shells. I don't know where the where the Akizuki is on this. But uh, given that the Yakizuki is an absolute monster when it comes to HE spam, uh, I can see this being a bit of an improvement. And the Harugumo now gets has the exact same torpedoes as the Kitakaze, I think, and gets the dispersion also adjusted. But the Harugumo, I think, gets an extra gun turret. So the Kitakaze seems to have moved from being sort of a tier 9 Akizuki to be a slightly less good Harugomo. So that might be interesting. It seems definitely like a buff to the Kitakaze to maybe make that grind a little bit less uh, ter terrifying. 
Uh, although one destroys, I'm not super concerned about tier 9 grinds because they don't affect it that much by the by the matchmaking, whereas in battleships it's a totally different story because of the gun caliber that happens. The Ibuki has been very slightly uh, buffed as well, so she got a bit better reload and a bit better range. I, I really do need to review the high tier Japanese cruisers because I love Japanese cruisers and I just haven't gotten to, <laughs> to doing that. Uh, and the Zhao gets the exact same treatment. So uh, that's, that's also nice to see. Uh, the Izumo, or Izumo, I, I'm not sure, has been, has been buffed. Now this is once again interesting because we now know that her initial penetration power has been increased to 459, so we we'll scroll back a little bit. Uh, we now know that that is still less than the 420 millimeters on the Friedrich der Große, but just by a little bit. It's almost the same value now. And she gets a bit better range. I haven't tried the Idiosomo yet, but uh, these things are sort of known as being a bit crap. Although I did enjoy the black one, so another one of those ships that I actually have to try. The Yamato, aha, has her initial penetration power increased to 506. So once again, we scroll up and we see she is a little bit over the course of curve first, but not by an awful lot. Now we don't need to know these numbers for any other ships. But, you know, we can keep an eye out and uh, sort of get a bit of a comparison. I don't think it's going to make a massive difference. It looks very much on par, but we'll, we'll see about it. Uh, now it gets really interesting. The Neptune, um, or as I would call it, probably the single best uh, light cruiser at tier 9. Sorry, Seattle. I like the Seattle. I think the Seattle is a great cruiser, but the Neptune is amazing. Uh, has been apparently found to be uh, too difficult to play. So she gets better dispersion. <laughs> and uh, she has the armor structure changed to protect the citadel. Um, not sure if that's going to make an awful lot of difference because it's a tier 9 matchmaking. So you're going to find all the 18 inch things coming your way. And I don't think these care very much. If anything, they'll not over penetrate as easily <laughs> anymore. But uh, we will have to see in practice how that goes. The Drake. Uh, the uh, British Tier 9 Heavy Cruiser has been adjusted. Now, that is a, these are ships that actually need buffs, but um, it doesn't seem they don't seem to be getting very much, very many. She gets a bit more range, but you know, meh. The Minotaur, obviously, absolutely in need of yet another buff because <laughs> that is not already the most powerful Tier 10 destroyer. Um, is getting the max dispersion decreased by 11%. That is pretty significant because the precision module gives you seven. Now this doesn't. Do, this is not the same as the uh, the Sigma on the Neptune, where you get the tighter grouping. This just means that the um, the overall ellipsis is smaller, and the grouping just can't get out of it. You know what I mean? And she gets the concealment buffed because yeah, sure. <laughs> Keep 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 on buffing the minor by all means. I won't complain. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think we yes. I, I think these buffs were personally. I think these buffs weren't necessary and sh could have been better spent on the British heavy cruiser line. But it is what it is. Uh, the Goliath gets a bit more range, so there is that. You know, uh, the Saint Louis, the tier nine French cruiser, which I think I haven't tried, effectively gets a free precision module with a 70% uh, dispersion decrease. The, uh, the, it, it's not, the 7% is not a massive, it's not making a massive difference. I have tested that in one of the previous videos uh, and um, about how, even the precise aim one gives you a 25% buff, I think. So uh, it's not a mass, it's not gonna make a massive difference, but it's nice to see. And the Henri gets the same treatment plus a slightly better turning speed. I still don't like the Henri, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not a fan of these massive cruisers. Uh, the Lyon has getting a very slight range improvements, which is nice, but you know, still a Lyon. And the Alsace, finally, the tier nine French battleship has gotten a little bit more hit points, but uh, in return has her reload increased but she's got the rapid reload as well now. I think the, and I might be wrong here, but I think the Alsace didn't have it. It was the Gascogne that had it and then the uh, Republic at tier 10, but the Alsace I think did not have because uh, tier nine and whatnot. But yeah, so uh, that reload increase is more than probably more than compensated by the rapid reload skill. So that is the end of the website. Now let me quickly switch over to the games because we're not yet finished. And we are back. So, 
Uh, the I'm actually on the press account right now, but uh, it works the same way. So, Kosa Kurfürst, there we have her. Uh, is it me or did the guns get longer? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm just imagining that. But uh, one thing that hasn't been mentioned in the in the patch notes, and there are a couple of things that haven't been mentioned in the patch notes, but one of them is that her secondary uh, her secondary overload has been nerfed. She used to get the secondary overload 2, if I'm not mistaken, and now she gets the secondary overload 1. I don't know what the actual difference is between the two. I can't remember. But uh, let's have a quick look if we can find it. So this does 20% reload and firing range for 15 seconds. Uh, who had a 2? Um, did the Pommern get... Uh, no, she gets the 1 as well. Uh, did the Odin get the 2? Uh, yes, the Odin gets the 2. So it's a 5% difference. But um, still, you know, it, it's one of the. It, it's, it wasn't mentioned, and uh, it uh, it definitely affects the ship in some way. So, in in summary, what has been changed in the Grosser Kurfürst? So my impression is that uh, she's being pushed from a niche ship, which means she's effective at mid range and a mid range brawler, uh, towards more of a standard play. Maybe people have been having trouble playing this ship. Um, which is a shame, really, because honestly, normally I do half of my damage on these things with my secondaries. And uh, especially the auto secondaries are um, are generally rather useful on these. Uh, and yeah, nerfing the secondaries and uh, improving the main guns. And I have tried, and probably the biggest impact is that you now get the 300% uh, damage from, from Citadels, which previously would have been, I think, 250. But uh, she doesn't. F the guns don't feel punchier or much punchier than they already were, uh, at least not on the ranges I'm playing her. And um, yeah, I'm. I feel it's a slight nerf and a slight push towards more mainstream gameplay for these uh, for the top three German battleships. The other thing that uh, hasn't been mentioned is that there were a couple of legendary modules that were introduced. So I think the yeah the midway gets one. I think this wasn't there before. Somebody mentioned that, but I haven't been paying attention because it's a carrier. But she gets the uh, plus 5% bomb damage because obviously American dive bombers aren't dangerous enough yet. The Japanese get the same thing. Guess what for? For the Haku. And it does. Uh, it improves the uh, torpedo bomber. But this one is actually um, like a bit of a mixed bag because it gives you more speed on the torpedo bombers but at the cost of some HP on the torpedo bombers. Now I would almost say it's probably worth it but uh, I don't know way enough about carriers to make that statement. The other two that uh, allegedly have been added and once again I have not been paying attention, the Kremlin uh, now gets a legendary module and uh, this thing gives 15% bow armor, 15% deck armor, and 15% uh, gun turret survivability. So that's interesting. Um, I might have to I may have to try the, the Kremlin again because I haven't tried this thing in a while, and I want to see if uh, if she's now more sustainable to play at the ranges that um, if this would make a difference. So I'm gonna have to try that out. And I think the other one was uh, yeah the Conqueror. So the Conqueror, actually, which I also wasn't a massive fan of, gets the um, gets a unique thing, which means she now gets the improved steering system, which gives max traverse plus 10 and traverse acceleration plus 25. So the traverse speed is the, uh, the speed in which the ship itself turns. And um, I think the traverse acceleration... Uh, the traverse acceleration is not going to be the turn time. T turn time is on the rudder. This thing actually probably gives her just basically more maneuverability. Although, uh, plus 10% is not going to mean 10 percentage points, right? It's usually 10%. So instead of 4.4 um, degrees, you're going to get 4.84 degrees per second of traverse speed. And uh, she will get into the full traverse faster than... Um, Although I'm not sure how, what's, what the actual practical impact of this is. Because if you can't turn the rudder, I don't know how much, uh, how much difference that makes. But it is, uh, it's, an interesting, um, it's an interesting unique uh, unique thing. Can I actually... Do I have that thing in the... Uh, let me have a quick look if I can actually see where that goes. It should be the slot, slot 3, right? 
do I have a, I should have a conqueror somewhere here. Yes, there it is. And it is, yes, it is indeed in slot three. So, in, so instead of the, I know this also says traverse acceleration. So this must be the rudder shift. Okay, ne never mind. Never mind. I'll take it back. So this is the this is the rudder shift. So you get the twenty five percent rudder shift, which is mass which is massive, uh, and the ten percent traverse speed. So let's let's try that out very quickly just to to verify this, uh, and then I'll I'll relieve you here. So I'm currently at fifteen percent uh, at fifteen second turn time and four point four degrees per second. So let's throw in the. Um, Let's throw in that thing. Uh, purchase, yes. And let's see what that changes. So now we need to open that again. And we are now at 4.84 and 15.31. So the turn time is actually slightly worse because this module gives plus 25 and this gives plus 15. That is confusing. It should be better now, shouldn't it? Why? Why is the yeah, I don't know. This is this is this is this is curious at least. I uh, have to do some more research on that. Anyway, uh, I think that was it for this uh, for this update. So, um lots of changes, especially around the upcoming uh, Dutchman dropping things from the sky. German battleships are a little li a little less German and a little more standard by now and a couple of legendary modules that we see and buffs to ships that <laughs> probably didn't need them, but okay, I'll take it anyway. Right, that's it for today. Thanks everybody and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.